My ChatGPT car is still undefeated. The Google Bard and Bing Chat cars couldn't stand up to the Nexa Aventura. I thought about going back to ChatGPT to try out my updated build list to generate a turbocharged economy vehicle in hopes to take down the Aventura. Hey guys, it's Tries here, and this is ChatGPT with a new white background. So as per usual, like how I generated the Nexa Aventura with the naturally aspirated build right here, I'm just simply copying and pasting it into the ChatGPT prompt here. So let's open up the turbocharged build list and copy everything from designing a made-up turbocharged economical gas vehicle from 2010 with the type of body, make, color, panel, and everything in every selection in automation to be building that game and hopefully take down the Aventura in BeamNG Drive. So copy everything and paste it here to the ChatGPT prompt and hit enter. So first of all, can you design a car? Yes sir, indeed. So just like the Aventura, the wannabe Volkswagen Golf say at Lyon, it'll be a hatchback called the Turbonova SGT in Velocity Blue. And it's turbocharged, but this may not work with the compression 10.5 to 1 ratio and 80mm compressor, 90mm turbine, which is the exducer for turbine, compressor, turbine is the inducer, 15 psi. <laughs> this may not work, but I'll take note of this and head it over to automation right now. So for the hatchback we're using, let's use this 2005 2.46 beater base type of hatchback that we got here. So for the panel material, like it says, It'll be made out of aluminum with a monocoque chassis made for the chassis material out of glued aluminum. And it claims the engine is a front transverse engine layout with the front suspension being a McPherson strut and the rear being a multi-link with the chassis quality slider set to a plus five. So for the engine, it'll be, like it says, an inline-4 engine, not an inline-3, made for the block material aluminum light with the bore and stroke, like I said, 86 millimeters to get it up to 1,998 cubic centimeters or 2 liters, with dual overcam 4 valves per cylinder made out of regular aluminum with the engine block quality slider to a plus 8. Damn, this thing's gonna be a beast. For the crank car rods, pistons, balance and mass, everything, so for the crankshaft will be a forged steel light type of crankshaft with the car rod set to just forged light and the piston set to low friction cast. Interesting. And it will just use a regular harmonic damper with the slider set to a 75 which should add 15.6 pounds of the counterweight with the bottom end set to a plus 3 for the quality. And like I mentioned about the compression, this is concerning, a 10.5 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set to a 65, and the springs and lifters set pretty stiff at an 80. There will be VVT only for the intake, and there will be VVL, variable valve lift, with the profile set to an 85 right here, and the RPM target point at 5,000 RPM with the RPM limit set to 7,000 RPM with the quality slider, plus six. And this will be a single turbo setup because, well, it's a four cylinder with the smart boost system for the type of turbocharger system with the inner cooler, pretty bizarre, 5,000, let's see if we can round up 5,000. 4,900 will do because it says 5,000, this is about 100 away, and being at 5,260 is 260 away, so 4,900 is the closest to 5,000 horsepower. And it's a variable geometry ball bearing setup with the compressor size, keep it as is to 80 millimeters, but for the inducer, the turbine claims 90 millimeters. We can't go at 90. I'll probably have to re-roll the turbocharger settings if I have to. AR compressor trim at a 70 with the boost set to 15 PSI. Let's see, 15.23 uh, I have to do because this is the closest to 15. And plus four for the turbocharger quality. Let's head over to the fuel system, which will be a multi-point electronic fuel injection with, um, it only just says, I said per cylinder, single, it didn't even give out the parameters. So I would assume single. And the intake manifolds are set to a variable with the slider set for the manifold size at a 70. The fuel octane is at 91, which I believe will be at a premium of 91 or 90 AKI. 
the fuel ignition timing map is at a plus two, which retards it a bit, which theoretically, this should be at like 88 AKI, like a, like a smidge above regular, ain't it? The fuel mapping, which will rich this up by setting it to an 80. And plus five for the fuel system, and finally for the exhaust headers this way or that way. Oh, the headers are right here. So the header says tubular racing headers with the header size set up to a 90. And it claims dual exhaust, but we got a single exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 76.2 millimeters, which is 3 inches. With a high full three-way cataconverter, add straight through for the first one, reverse full for the second, plus two on the quality, and right away it don't run because the pistons can't handle it. I guess we have to re-roll the engine. Let's go back to chat GPT real quick. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is just redo the engine. Everything about the engine from the size of it, materials, turbocharger, compression, everything. Just the engine only. So re-roll this and redesign for the Turbo Nova SGT. So same size, 10.0 to 1, 90, 6,000. Again, bigger turbine. And bigger boost! Huh? Man, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Well, let me redo this real quick and see if it's better or worse. Okay, so all I did was change it from a low friction cast like the previous engine to a forged light, and the engine does run at almost 357 horsepower right away, but terrible turbo lag. But since I re-rolled it, I have to pretty much stand by and abide by the new engine build list that it generated for me, so I'll do the rest and see if it's better or worse than what we got here. Okay, so with the new build list, now we improved it to 392.3 horsepower and it peaks at redline, but the turbo lag is ungodly bearable, like unbearable, like it really kicks in at 4,000 RPM, peaks at the 51, 5,000 RPM, and kind of levels out at the end. Damn, this is terrible. And unfortunately, it says 90 millimeters for the turbine, still can't generate, or not like generate, generate, but get this to match up to 90 millimeters, and for the fuel system, this worked before, like, off-camera, I still can't get the type of configuration that says, like, oh yeah, it's fuel-injected. Just multi-point and skips over here, even though here, I'll show you. I told it here to say, if it is fuel-injected, how many fuel injectors will be applied to this engine? Like, a single throttle setup, twin throttle, or throttle per cylinder? This flat-out ignores it in the build list here. See, fuel system injected, multi-point, and just skips on over to the type of intake manifold. Let's just ask this, is it single or throttle? Uh, throttle per cylinder. Apologies for the oversight, okay. <laughs> You're welcome. No worries. Damn, now it's even powerful, but racing! Uh, gotta change out the manifold, and especially the type of turbine inducer size. So between 84.5 down to 45.8. I'll give out the numbers real quick. So I told it to generate what type of new intake for the intake manifold after choosing throttle per cylinder. So it now says to choose a performance high intake, which will do that right away. So go to fuel system, performance high. Well, after I change out the turbocharger, which the turbocharger says here at a 67.2 a millimeters for the new turbine size. Let's see if that holds true. No, failed due to knock and compressor surge has damaged the turbo. Guess I'll generate again. 75 millimeters. Let's see. 75.1. Nope. More compressor surge, unfortunately. Like, what's the turbo grid at? And, uh, uh, god damn, that is a lot of stress. So it seems like none of these options are better because of how stressed out the turbocharger is. Because if I max it out, 84.5, we got 71% of surge stress being applied to the turbocharger. And the lower we go with this setup is we got well, more stress at 83.9, 82.9 stress. More stress, and boom! 80.9, turbo exploded, this engine won't run no more. I might have to regenerate the turbocharger itself. Okay, so keep the compressor as is and keep the turbine too, but up the boost to a 25? Are you kidding me? I guess... Hey, that wasn't so bad, but we got a freaking earthquake going up in here. So we got everything settled out here for this engine. Everything is pretty much matching up with the build as of right now of what it generated for me in ChatGPT. So the horsepower rating for this generated engine is 439.9 horsepower at 7100 RPM of a torque rating of 361.5 pounds feet of torque at 4900 RPM. So the engine it generated is pretty terrible. We got some comrades and crankshaft stress that we got going here seeing that the torque limit is around 
300 pounds feet of torque, but we're well over that right now. Quite a bit of knocking, 11% reduction, the reliability reduction, and power stress at negative 12% of reliability reduction as it's rated to 241 horsepower. So it's powerful, but a terrible engine. So let's give you a listen of what this powerful, yet terrible engine sounds right here. Well, not too bad, but the engine idles at 1300 RPM. <laughs> I guess that's why the freaking cam profile is at a 75 with the VVL at a 90, like, like a full bone racing setting. So going with the rest of the car from the original build list, not the regenerated engine ones. So it'll be a front wheel drive with a manual 6 speed with the top speed set, estimated top speed, 155 miles per hour. I can type this right. Oh, you can. I didn't set any parameters for the first gear speed, type of gear ratios, the spread speed limit or nothing like that, but for the, it's a helical, a limited slip differential for our differential setup with the drivetrain at a plus three. For the tires, we're going to be using some sports compound tires, so radial sports compound, and it's set to 255s, 45s, R15, so 225s up front, which is the max we can go. Pretty much beats up to the friggin' fenders at the front of the car, and for the rear, of course, 225s. And we got some breathing room to back in. And let's increase this to some 17-inch rims. And we probably have to thicken up the tires because it's 225s, 35s. So I believe we increase the tires until... I guess 625s will work front and back. So we got it P225s, 45s, R17s with some alloy rims, and plus two on the tire quality. And for the brakes, they are some Venedisc, four pistons, front, and... Yes, it'll be Venedisc, but a four piston up front with its size set to 320 millimeters. And the rear is also Venedisc with a two piston of 280 millimeters. The front brake force, uh, 60%, and the back is at a 40%. Interesting. Brake pad type is towards a 70. Wow, we're in a mark towards the more racing setting and plus three. For the under tray, it says that we would want a flow optimized type of under tray, and it does have cooling flaps for the active air, which I rarely use for my builds. The engine airflow percentage is set to a 60%, so increase this, and the brake airflow is set to a 40%, so right around here. And the quality is at a plus four, and for the seats... Where are the seats? No, I don't see any seats here. Ugh. God damn, I gotta go back to ChatGPT. So it turns out both of the interior and the type of steering and traction aids were not generated into that car build. So let's add some additional features. So a five-seater, two in the front, and three in the back with some premium seats with an infotainment system, premium infotainment system. Damn, plus 10 on the interior. Damn, it's going to be lit. Electrical variable power steering with electronic stability control and launch control at a plus eight. So like it said, two in the front, three in the back with a premium interior and a premium infotainment system, plus 10 on the infotainment or interior quality. An electric variable power steering for the steering system, electronic stability and launch control, and was there quality here? Uh, yes, plus eight on the traction aids quality, and for the safety, it's going to be set to the 2010s of advanced 2010 safety standards with the safety slider at a plus seven, which will add weight and automation. It would probably do so in Beam and G, but I doubt it. And for the optimized slider, it'll be at a 70, which lightens it in automation, but this won't do it in Beam and G, and keep the weight distribution slider as is to a 50. And finally, for the suspension, which fortunately it did generate, so springs, progressive springs with adaptive dampers, and active sway bars with a sport preset set to a plus 6 for the quality. So right away with this car here, it's kind of a fun car, fun premium, but the reliability is terrible at a 45.1. But hey, look at the MPG rating, 25.9 miles per gallon of a weight of 2,743.2 pounds. And the top speed claims, yes, 154.4 miles an hour. And we got some torque reliability issues because of how torquey this engine is. And the gearbox is not handling this torquey engine. 0 to 60, 5.6 seconds, not too bad. 
and no major oversteering understeering issues, so pretty good in sportiness factor and pretty good drivability wise. Really great, actually. But we got the brakes being low. <laughs> I agree being low and being too hard up front or on the back, but hey, no brake fade. So seeing that we got the car all built up in here, I might as well just go to fixtures tab and design this car here as is in a time lapse design of me designing the, what was it called again? The Turbo Nova SGT, so name it here, Turbo Nova or Turbo Nova SGT, yeah? And we need to generate a name for the family and variant name for the engine. So generating a family and variant name for the engine, we got two responses with certainly, let's name the engine, Turboflex Hyperboost Inline 4 Evo. And number two, certainly, how about naming the engine variant Turbojet 2.0 to highlight its turbocharged nature and the engine displacement of two liters. For the family name, we could go with something like Power Pulse to signify the engine's power and performance characteristics. So the full name could be Power Pulse Turbojet 2.0 T. Now let's do response one because it's more concise and badass, I believe. All right, so we got the names all set. Turbo Flex, Hyper Boost i4, Evo. So everything is done. So now let's do the time lapse design of designing the Turbo Nova SGT and go head to head with the next adventure and BMG Drive. So commence a time lapse right now. So for the design of this car, it was painful trying to come up with a whole design for the front and back as it took over three hours to do all this. For the front, I spent the most time coming up with something that's good, as this is the first time designing a car with this car body. I managed to create a grill with chrome bars no problem, but the headlights and secondary grill were troubling for me. First, I used some negative dog tape to cut into the body to create some custom headlights. Then, I used some angled patches and 3D fixtures to create the inner housing for the custom headlights, which was a pain in the ass doing all this. And also, seeing that this is a 2010 car, I thought about adding some daytime running lights at the bottom of the headlight housing with this skinny turn indicator that's attached to it. I then cycled through a ton of headlight fixtures until I found a couple pairs of modern LED lights to be used for this car. For the bottom grill, I slapped on a generic vanilla grill fixture with the side vents and LED fog lights that are attached to it. I capped off the front end with a UK license plate and parking sensors. For the back, it wasn't that bad doing this design. First, I did the easy stuff by adding a license plate mold fixture to make way for the rear UK plate. Then, I copied the manufacturer's logo I made for the front and slapped that on the back. I also placed the model name and trim level on the bottom of the hatch door. For the taillights, I used a custom taillight fixture which almost perfectly molds to the hatch door and the bumper cutout seams with this particular fixture. I added a wraparound DRL that goes around the brake light which you see here and that's paired with a turn indicator and reverse light that's below the brake light. And finally, as it says by repainting the car, I did repaint it to Velocity Blue as it says, and I purposely, for my personal preference, blacked out the rims. So after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 2010 Turbo Nova SGT. This ChatGPT generated turbo economy car is powerful with some basic and somewhat mediocre styling. Anyways, will this car finally take down the undefeated Nexa Aventura and be crowned the best AI-generated car of all time? Or not and be like the Google Bard and Bing Chat cars? So after completing the Turbo Nova SGT, the ChatGPT turbocharged economical vehicle, despite the promise we got here before exploring the speed drive, such as the front brake force being too low, the short gearing reduced the car's top speed, the front rear damper being too hard, the rear brake force is too high, the engine bay being quite full, the engine lost power due to severe retard timing, the comrades being high torque, the crankshaft high torque, the rear tires are quite wide, the engine front and career getting narrow, the gearbox reality is too old due to excessive torque. Let's hop on over to Beam and G Drive to see if this can beat the Dexa Aventura, aka the naturally aspirated ChatGPT car. So here we are at the map of Grid Map version 2 where I tested the Nexa Adventura and the Automation AI Generated Car. But instead of the Automation AI Generated Car, we got the, what's it called again, Turbo Nova SGT taking that car's place. 
So the first thing we're going to do is do a base performance test again with the Nexa Aventura to see how much of a difference it is between this naturally aspirated car versus the turbocharged car. So with the base performance test, the first thing we're going to do is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and a top speed run for both vehicles. So start off with the Nexa Aventura by accelerating now. First gear second gear and so on because this car just like flies through the gears and it's so zippy on the track so 0 to 62 at 8.33 seconds of 448.13 feet pretty fair especially being 113 brake horsepower and 114 pounds whoops feet of torque so brakes i think these are beefy back in the day 62 to 0 in 2.63 seconds of 109.40 feet distance wise is pretty healthy time wise I'd say fairly average, but it is great in distance, time-wise, average. So for a top speed run already in effect, eh, a little bit worse, 0 to 62, it is two tenths of a second worse. I believe the top speed was like 120, let's see. Yeah, this is all six gears, and we're probably going to reach top speed, maybe 110 miles an hour, but we got this little thing in a way, so, 110 miles an hour. Yep, we reached top speed, 110 miles an hour. Give me a, some some place to smash this out somewhere, it's like the sand. Nope. Maybe that too, as the frickin' parts explode. And base drop we go with the wannabe say it. Volkswagen Golf type of hybrid of a design that I had. Designed this car over a year ago. Just like about over a year ago, like February of last year, I made the design. It's been a while. So keeping of note of a 0-62 to 62 of an 8.33, 62-0, 2.63. So let's do an acceleration test with the SGT to Turbo Nova right now. First gear. Not too bad. Flying through the gears at 20 frickin' PSI and more. 0 to 62 in. Yeah, 0 to 62 at 6.80 seconds of 344.27 feet. I guess that turbo lag that it generated wasn't really what it thought in automation. Because it claimed like a 0 to 62 in automation was like a 5.7, but we got a 6.8. A lot worse than it had. 62 to 0 in 2.90 seconds of 120.53 feet. So in terms of time, yes, worse in time, worse in distance. So pretty much, the brakes are just average, time-wise and distance-wise. So for a top speed run already in effect, ooh, better 0 to 62. I think that was 6.20 versus... 6.80, so six tenths of a second better by just manually shifting it. And top speed wise, a lot higher than the Nexa Ventura. And redlining at 156 miles per hour. A lot better compared to 110 miles an hour. And second of all, we are definitely going to launch further and land further compared to the Adventura. And coming to a stop. Is the tire still rolling and the car is a heap of mess? Same thing with the Aventura, as both cars' engines are running. <laughs> so let's go to the automation test track to do a time trial run with both, maybe with this vehicle, but I'll pull up the times for the Nexa Aventura. So here we are at the automation test track, like I said, at the handling circuit here. We're we doing two laps with a rolling start, like I did with the Idle Hawkeye, the, uh, the automation AI generated car, and the Nexa Aventura. So, can I pull up the times of the time trial, like, right here, right now? Yes, I can. So, technically in first place is this car, whatever it is, but technically first place, the AI-generated cars is a Nexa Aventura... Aventura. <laughs> it's a 2 minute, 48 seconds, 121 milliseconds we have to beat. And second place was the wannabe Toyota Echo Echo, the Hawkeye Idol, like the automation AI-generated car, the Peugeot Buick Encore Hybrid, and Honda Civic Civic did piss poor. So, we gotta be a 248 with this car to beat the Aventura. So, start things off here and ready. Go. Perfect ass launch. Turn off the trash controls, and I got AIDS with the freaking Beam and G upshift again. Damn. Freaking wheel spin it up in here. Say, so we're getting all that wheel spin by turning off the trash control. Like, but what would I, I put the freaking power down? And as the turbo lag, second with the turbo lag of how it kicks at around 5,000 RPM, you get that late turbo lag in it by turning the trash control off, you get all that wheel spin, and then all of a sudden you have lost the capabilities of steering, because, well, that's what happens when you put too much power on a front-wheel drive car. 
So right away, unlike the Nexa Adventure, if you can recall how I drove that car or how it drove, that car was like stupidly snappy and zippy through the corners. Like, I could probably hit a corner at like 30, 40 miles an hour, and <laughs> that thing could fly through the corners, no problem. Like, it's a freaking Formula One car or something. But as you're seeing right here, instead of being zippy through the corners, it's being screechy through the corners as you get that wheel spin and lose the capabilities of steering. So the first lap time, 1 minute 27 seconds, 202 milliseconds. I had to watch my braking zone there and... Ooh, 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 ooh. Damn, that was a terrible steering input there. I just practically lost all steering. I mean, there is a chance that I can redeem myself on this lap as I kind of have to play a little clean on my apexes, unlike that apex there, where that was terrible. And if that would be Gran Turismo, that would be like a two, three second penalty going off the track. So coming up to the final bend here, keep steering left, keep steering left, gun it at a time of 1 minute, 26 seconds, 751 milliseconds, which will... Put us in second place and still have not beaten the Dexa Adventura of a time of base drop 2 minutes 53 seconds, 953 milliseconds. Sub damage to the car as we're still hitting the guardrail. How about the Chevron? Is the Chevron's clippable or no? Like, I'm coming up to this one. They are non clippable, unfortunately, so we did miss the time by 5 seconds, almost 6 seconds. What was the first place car? Oh, the GT1 adventure where I was in Film 186's, like, build and race, just testing out this car. And racing it in one of his live streams, like, like a couple months ago. So go to Free Roam, and... Be under four wheels, and just sit in disappointment that it did not beat the next adventure at the automation handling circuit. So, for the final part of the video, let's drop this bad boy down to the good old Car Jump Arena, the 2023 paid mod version made by the same author responsible for making the most famous regular Card Jump Arena map. So let's take it to the top of this ramp right now. So here we are at the top of Card Jump Arena, the paid mod map, and we got a 2 light, 3 light, a 4 light, and a 5 light. Finally, we got this back up in here and go. Just go right away. It's telling me to go, so go. So finally, I updated the Card Jump Arena map, and that was do the little like countdown sign kind of like the original car jump arena the regular car jump arena mod that you can download in the bmg repository so a speed of 177 and we are going to be landing past the 300 past the 400 slow this down a little we're going to be hitting ourselves at the between i think like 435 meters i believe so full time hide the ui go End over end. Still end over end. This is pretty damn brutal. Caution flag is out. And in the pond. Skip the pond. And hit the fence as the engine is still running. Are you kidding me? And let me redo this. I accidentally clicked on this. All right, there we go. So can I free this car and show you? No, we're stuck somewhere. We were stuck, but not anymore. So after tumbling end over end down the ramp, through the pond, skipped over the pond, and hitting the fence, we got the turbocharger's intercooler completely exposed. Our 6,000 horsepower rated intercooler, which is pretty damn big, our 85 millimeter compressor, 70 millimeter turbine, 80 millimeter turbine, and the rest of the engine is just mangled up, but somehow still running. And the rest of the car with the body, it is mangled up, but... We got three of the four tires still on this vehicle, still in fairly good shape, I guess. <laughs> so with the Turbo Nova SGT, aka the turbocharged economical gas vehicle from 2010, made by ChatGPT, this car, compared to the Nexa Aventura, did better in a few categories, primarily in top speed, acceleration, and power. It didn't beat the track time at the automation test track, making that car still undefeated in a way. If the Turbo Nova was as agile as the Aventura, it probably would have gotten close to or even beat the Aventura's time. And also, this build list and the naturally aspirated one are now updated and they're live on my trismedia.com website. 
The link to download these two build lists are in the description below. So anyways, that'll do it with Automation and BeamNG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tri's Rising Up, and signing out.